Hey, it's been a couple weeks, but here we are, week eight, talking tight ends, the football kind, once again. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully, everybody's doing well out there, ready for week eight, talking some tight ends, the football kind, this week. And I'm going to switch it up a little bit for this episode. Listen, I could go through every matchup, but we're going to be talking about some tight ends that are obvious must-sits. Heck, these guys probably aren't even owned. So for this show, I'm going to go ahead and just give you my rankings, my top 12 tight ends here for week eight, discuss them match by match, and give you a little bit of detail that way. Instead of going through here and talking about people you really don't care about, but before I do this list, make sure, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell. We have our live show coming Saturday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Want to see how many people we can get out there. Want to communicate and interact with as many of you guys as possible. We're going to have fun. I'm going to do some shout outs, answer some questions, do some Q&A. I got the Let It Flow helmet sitting around here. Going to have some fun uh, with it. Looking forward to it. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you know as soon as I go live. But for now, let's talk about the top 12 tight ends here for week eight. Number one on my list is going to be Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs. Right now, he's the number two ranked fantasy tight end, averaging almost 16 points a game. He's he's getting double digits every single week that he plays, with the exception of week one. He's got a super high ceiling. Uh, it, it's somebody that you can count on, especially in this offense in Kansas City. They're going to throw the ball a ton. And now he gets another matchup against the Denver Broncos. Second time this year. What did he do the first time against the Denver Broncos? Seven catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown. Good enough for 20 fantasy points. It's a great matchup again. This time they're going to be at home. They were in Denver last time. Really like the upside. Travis Kelsey is my number one fantasy tight end here for week eight. Number two, I got Gronk, and this one has a little bit of an asterisk next to it. I'm taking into account that I believe he's going to be 100% good to go by Monday night's game against the Buffalo Bills. I really don't need to sell you on Rob Gronkowski. Yes, he missed last week with back spasms. They already said that he should be good to go this week, but it's something you need to pay attention to, monitor, make sure he's practicing throughout the week. But it's Rob Gronkowski, right? He's having himself a slightly down year compared to his standards. But in such a thin position, he's one of the constants that you can count on every single week to get you close to double digits. Huge touchdown upside. And with Tredavious White trying to take away Josh Gordon this week, I can see a heavy dose of Rob Gronkowski if he's healthy. And he's going to be my number two tight end for week eight. Number three on my list is going to be Zach Ertz of the Philadelphia Eagles, who's currently the number one tight end in all of fantasy football. He's already had four games this season scoring over 20 fantasy points. Last week against the Panthers, nine catches for 138 yards, only two touchdowns on the season, but that's something that's going to come with time also. He has the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're the the second-ranked defense against opposing tight ends, giving up on average only seven points per game. Uh, It's something that's just to temper expectations slightly on Zach Ertz. He's an obvious must-start. He, he's a big part of that offense led by Carson Wentz. But due to the matchup, I'm going to drop him just to number three on the list this week for Week 8. Number four on my list is going to be David Njoku of the Cleveland Browns. Now, about three or four weeks ago, I said, listen, this guy is about to take off. You want to grab him quickly. Baker Mayfield's going to start looking for him. What has that resulted in? He's had double digits the last four weeks. Touchdowns in the last two. Last week against Tampa Bay, four catches, 52 yards, and a touchdown. And now he gets the 30th ranked defense against opposing tight ends, the Pittsburgh Steelers, who on average give up 18 points a game to fantasy tight ends. And they're going to have to throw the ball in Cleveland. They're going to come out on fire at home in Pittsburgh coming off the bye week. Week one, they had that disappointing tie in overtime. The Steelers are going to come out and try to rub it in a little bit. They're going to have to throw the ball against this Pittsburgh team. And David Njoku is one of the top targets in that offense for Baker Mayfield. And I love him this week in week eight. I have him as my number four fantasy tight end. Number five on my list is going to be Jared Cook, who I expect to get a big bump in production here for the Oakland Raiders, especially now that Amari Cooper is gone. All they really have to rely on is Jordy Nelson and Martavis Bryant on the outside, Jalen Richard in the backfield. Jared Cook has started seeing a lot more volume, and he's produced at times so far this year. It's been somewhat inconsistent, but he has a good matchup this week against the Indianapolis Colts, who are on average giving up a total of 13 points per game to fantasy uh, tight ends. He's going to be somebody who slowly and slowly gradually increases in volume and production. And if you have Jared Cook, hang on to him because he may be the top offensive weapon in this Oakland Raiders offense 
going forward for the foreseeable future. I have him as number five here this week. Coming in at number six, I have George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers. And this guy is the one lone guy that we really want in this offense, right? He's the favorite target of C.J. Beathard. Last week against the Rams, five catches, 98 yards, and a touchdown. Has had double digits four out of the last five weeks. He does have somewhat of a tougher matchup against the Arizona Cardinals this week, who are only on average giving up a total of eight points per game to fantasy tight ends. However, Kittle is seeing the volume in order to make him relevant week in and week out. He's somebody you definitely want to start, and he has that high upside. He's capable of going out there and catching 10 balls on any given week. He's that involved in the offense, and that's why I have him as number six here this week. Number seven, and here it is week eight, and I'm surprised I can still talk about him, is Jordan Reed of the Washington Redskins. Now, not only am I talking about him, he's probably the healthiest guy on the team at this point, which is crazy to think about. But he hasn't really done a whole lot with it, right? We expected more out of him and Alex Smith. Last week against the the Cowboys, only two catches for 43 yards. Hasn't had a touchdown since week one, which is somewhat alarming, but he's healthy. And as long as he's healthy in this game plan, there's a lot of banged up wide receivers in Washington right now. Really, their only other healthy option is Josh Doxson at this point, whose best game was last week where he had like three catches and 40 yards. They need some offensive weapons in this offense, and Jordan Reed at some point is going to start seeing more volume. They need it to come from somewhere. Jordan Reed, as long as he's healthy, has that high upside, and that's why I have him at number seven here this week. Number eight is next, and here we have Eric Ebron of the Indianapolis Colts. The only thing that's keeping Eric Ebron all the way down at eight for me is Eric Swope is all of a sudden taking touchdowns away. He's had touchdowns in three straight weeks. Now he's in, he's questionable this week. He's already limited in practice. This could be the entire Eric Ebron show this week against the Oakland Raiders, who are right now a decent team against opposing tight ends, giving up only nine and a half points per game. But we've seen what this offense can do with Eric Ebron in the past. Now T.Y. Hilton is back. That eats slightly into the production of Eric Ebron, but it also draws some of the defensive attention away to go focus on T.Y. They also have Marlon Mack in the backfield. That's going to pull more defenders into the box, giving Eric Ebron more one-on-one opportunities. He has four touchdowns in the last four games, and he's a definite start for me this week. I have him right now as tight end eight. Number nine is going to be Trey Burton of the Chicago Bears, and he's coming off his best game of the season by far. Nine catches, 126 yards, and a touchdown. That now gives him a touchdown three straight weeks, four for the season, and they're slowly starting to involve him more and more in the offense as the season progresses. He's averaging right around 13 points a game. He's tight end six overall right now in fantasy points. Going up against a New York Jets uh, defense, only giving up nine points to opposing tight ends. But the last time they were really facing a team that involves their tight ends was week six against the Colts where they gave up 107 yards and two touchdowns to their tight ends. And now Trey Burton gets this matchup and this opportunity to go in there where they're going to be able to get him the ball in space. Uh, Matt Nagy has has made this offense something that that really fits Mitch Trubisky. And and they're getting these guys the ball in space and, and letting them make plays, and they're doing a great job of it. Trey Burton is going to continue to progress in this offense, and last week could just be the tip of the iceberg. He could be a top five tight end easy rest of season. This week, though, I have him as tight end nine overall. Number 10 may be a little bit of a shock. It's going to be Chris Herndon of the New York Jets coming in here, and it's kind of a surprise. A lot of people don't even know who he is. He's been mentioned in some waiver wire shows here as of late. But it's somebody with some actual value right now if you need some help. He's had touchdowns two straight weeks. Last week against the Minnesota Vikings, four catches, 42 yards, and a touchdown. That gives him double-digit fantasy points two straight weeks. And now he gets the Chicago Bears, who are a lot easier to throw on than they are to run on. Um, They've given up, on average, 10.5 points to opposing tight ends. Chris Herndon, somebody who's going to, you know, he's going to excel in this offense now that there's limited weapons. You know, Jermaine Kearse didn't do anything last week. They're without Terrell Pryor. Quincy Inunua is hurt. I mean, Pryor's been cut. I mean, there's not a whole lot of options there. Chris Herndon could really gain some value in this offense, and I have him as tight end 10 here for Week 8. Number 11 this week is going to be Jimmy Graham of the Green Bay Packers. Now, he's had double-digit fantasy points three straight weeks. Now he gets the Los Angeles Rams, who have been known to give up a point or two to opposing tight ends. They're giving up on average 13 points last week. Five catches, 98 yards, and a touchdown. George Kittle involved there. And Jimmy Graham has slowly started to evolve in this offense. Now, yes, that's partly because Randall Cobb has missed time. 
Geronimo Allison has missed time. We don't know quite yet if those guys come back or not this week, and that's kind of why I have him dropped a little bit farther down the list. It does sound like there's a possibility these guys return, and if they do, that eats into the targets of Jimmy Graham and kind of limits his upside somewhat. He only has one touchdown on the season. We talked about it in the preseason. In order for him to get to this elite level, he needs a lot of touchdowns. He hasn't quite gotten them yet. Hopefully they can get him going here after the bye week, and I have him as number 11 here for week 8. Number 12 is going to be Greg Olson of the Carolina Panthers, and he has yet to really get it going coming back from this foot injury. It's obvious he's not 100%. Cam Newton isn't looking his way as much as he has in the past, but maybe that's maybe that's planned. Maybe they're trying to ease Greg back in, see what he can handle, give him a little bit more at a time. He salvaged his fantasy day last week against the Philadelphia Eagles, only had two catches for five yards. Luckily, one of them was for a touchdown. Got him eight fantasy points for the day. Uh, He hasn't really had a great game so far this year. Gets a decent matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. If they can get inside the red zone, I expect them to look towards Greg Olson's direction. Uh, The Baltimore Ravens last week against the Saints gave up a big week to Ben Watson. Uh, Eight catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Greg Olson is definitely capable of that. Uh, If he can get healthier, if he can get back to full speed and start gaining the trust back of Cam Newton, he could easily slide back into that top 10 uh, tight end role here for fantasy football. But for this week, I'm going to keep him all the way down at number 12 and hope that he can get things going moving forward. All right, so those are my top 12 fantasy tight ends here for week eight. Had to do it a little bit different. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of guys out there to talk about outside of these top 12 guys. Want to make sure I put them in order for you guys. Try to make this decision a little bit easier if possible. If I didn't cover who you need, hit it up down in the comment section. Either myself or one of the 25,000 people part of this community will try to help you out. We're here to help each other out. I don't think there's very many of us playing in the same league together. We're allowed to help each other out. But like I said earlier in the show, make sure you have that subscribe button clicked and the notification bell. You don't want to miss it when we go live Saturday night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Make sure you guys have a good rest of your week, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.